In this video, I'm going to be walking you some of the top 10 medical apps that you'll be using either as a physician, as a resident, as a medical student, nursing student, as well as different nurses. So it's going to be broken down kind of like this. We're going to be talking about some apps that you can use for information lookup, empiric antibiotic therapy, medication dosing, appropriate imaging, medical calculators, and finally screening and vaccines. Some of these are going to be apps for your phone. Some of these are going to be actual websites. So the first one is very obvious. So you're going to have things like up to date. Um, this is a great resource. If you don't already have it downloaded, you should download it right away. Um, it just gives you a lot of good information, very detailed. The one downside to up to date that I think is that it, sometimes it gives you too much information or it explains things that you don't really necessarily need the information. So one of the resources that I found about recently was this one right here. It's the UCSF Hospitalist Handbook. And essentially what this is, it's the cliff notes for up to date. It gives you very high yield information very quickly. So you don't have very much information, but you also only have the highest yield. So let's say we take an example of dyspnea. So for this, if we were to look right here, they kind of broke it down into different definitions, the differential, the evaluation, and the management. So here we have the differential. So it's good going in before you see a patient or after a patient. Well, what are some guiding questions that I could ask about? They've kind of broken down dyspnea by cardiac, pulmonary, psychogenic, and so on and so forth. So this gives you a good framework for thinking about a patient. Then after that, what type of evaluation do you want to do? What type of physical exam or other tests would you like to do? And then as well as what type of management. So this would be management in terms of treatment, but also in terms of diagnoses. So it kind of has a lot of different diseases here in here. So you can just search um, the actual app itself and it gives you a lot of very high yield information. The other option for this would be um, the orange or purple book, the pocket notebook guide. And I think that's good. The only problem is it doesn't really have a search function. And in this day and age, I think that you want information very quickly. And this is one way to get that information. And they kind of summarize all the key points right here. The next thing that I'm going to show you, which I think is extremely important, is empiric antibiotic therapy. So one of the best resources I think out there for empiric antibiotic therapy that you want for a website or an app that's free is going to be this one by UCSF IDMP. IDMP stands for Infectious Disease Management Program. And the way you find it is just like that. You Google UCSF IDMP and then um, you can click on that empiric antibiotic therapy. So the way that they've broken down is they have many different aspects of the website, inpatient, outpatient, pediatrics. They also have some dosing guidelines and then finally some susceptibility information. So let's say you have some type of bug and you want to think about what type of antibiotics will cover it. So this is a great resource that I always use when I'm on outpatient or even when I'm on inpatient. And so when you're dealing with an outpatient, let's say we have a patient that has a UTI and you, you want to think, well, what type of bugs are going to cause a UTI? Well, these are the common bugs that you have to think about. These are going to be your first line choice of uh, medications. And then finally, um, these are going to be some alternative drugs that you can think of. Likewise, if we were in the inpatient setting and let's say we have some type of pneumonia, so we would scroll down, they've kind of broken it down into all these different uh, categories based on system. Then you can find, well, here is community acquired pneumonia um, in a you know medical patient and ICU patient. These are the type of bugs we may be thinking about, and these are the treatments that we're going to be thinking about. So I think this is great uh, for that purpose. The other thing is if you click on something, if it's hyperlinked, it can also talk about dosing. So if it's hyperlinked, that means it's probably going to be some type of clearance issue. So the creatinine clearance of greater than 50, 10 to 50, or less than 10. So let's take, for example, ampicillin. If you have a fine creatinine clearance, you're going to be dosing every four hours, every six hours, or every eight hours, depending on your clearance, and also breaks it down by different diagnoses. So I think that's a great resource. The other resource that they have is also microbial susceptibility information. So let's say we have a patient that has enterococcus, and we want to think, well, how do you treat a patient with enterococcus? Well, these are the susceptibility, at least at their hospital, and you can kind of extrapolate that information for whatever you're dealing with. For more educational resources like our H&P notebooks, check out medicalbasics.com.
Some of the other resources that are very high yield are going to be the Johns Hopkins Antibiotic Guide and the Stanford Antibiotic Guide. These are both paid resources. I think they are, I want to say around $30 every year. So they're a yearly subscription that you have to pay for. Um, they're great resources, so definitely highly recommend them if you're willing to pay some money. The next thing that I'm going to be talking about is the reverse. So let's say you have an attending who you had been treating with an antibiotic for a certain period of time or whatever whatever medication you're giving, and now they say, well, let's change the medication. Let's change it to something else. Well, how do you know the dosing? How do you know the frequency? Well, there's a few apps that you can use. One is Medscape. I never knew that Medscape actually was designed also for physicians. I always thought it was designed more for patients. But here's an example they kind of break it down by the different dosing, how frequently you can dose uh, Bactrim. And the other example, this actually should say Hippocrates rather than Medscape, but it's another example. So they kind of talk about the different adult dosing, whether or not it's in some type of infection, sinusitis, and then if you have to do any renal dosing as well. I personally, I think I like Hippocrates more so than I like Medscape. Some other resources that you will find very helpful are going to be Micromedics. I used this when I was a student and I thought that was extremely useful, but uh, no longer was able to have access to it as, as I graduated. And the other one that's going to be very commonly used is going to be LexiComp. And the reason why it's so commonly used is because it's actually linked within UpToDate. And so LexiComp and Hippocrates, I think, are go hand in hand. They kind of display information very similarly. So if you want, uh, you know, you want an app version, then you can download uh, Hippocrates. And then if you want one that's just on more of the, the PC um, within the actual computer, you can use LexiComp. The next thing that I'm going to show you is about imaging. So one of the most important things is when do you image, what modality should you use? So the ACR, which is the American College of Radiology, they also have an app, but their website is one that you can kind of browse, and they give you appropriateness criteria. So this is good for two reasons. One, let's say I, I had a patient where I was dealing with the right upper quadrant pain, and they were talking about um, whether or not you should, we already had a CT on the patient, and we were thinking, do we also need an ultrasound. Well, we went to the ACR and we kind of looked at it. And anything seven to nine means that it's going to be the number one test for that specific uh, disease or that specific symptom. Anything from four to six is kind of indeterminate. Anything one to three is going to be not the best test. So we had a CT already, but actually the best test is going to be an ultrasound. So we ended up getting an ultrasound as well. This is also very useful because they kind of break it down by different symptoms. So if you're worried about cholangitis, if you're worried about cholecystitis, whatever it may be, you can kind of use the ACR appropriateness criteria respectively. The other thing is though, if you just have a, a random complaint, you have pain in the left upper quadrant, or you have pain uh, somewhere, or, or whatever the, the chief complaint is, you can just go and you know you want to image them, but you have no idea what to image or, or why you're imaging. Well, this can give you some ideas uh, based off of that. The other website that I thought would be helpful to, to show you is um, this website called What to Order by Fresno IM. It's, it's, a, it's a resource that you can use that essentially makes the ACR a little bit more intuitive. It, it's, a, it's a website that essentially took all of the ACR appropriateness criteria and made it into a much nicer website. The next thing is going to be some type of calculator. I think everybody needs calculators and you can use whichever calculator you would like. I use MD Calc, other people use MedCalc. What I think is most important is actually finding the correct calculators to use. So what I broke this down to is kind of inpatient, outpatient, and then these are just calculators. Okay. So I'm going to talk about each one of these very, very briefly. What I kind of broke it down into inpatient is we have a number of different tests or a number of different scores that you'll use um, in different settings. So Hasblood, Chad's Vast, these are going to be ones where you're going to want to think about when you're anticoagulating a patient for AFib, either what is their risk of bleeding and what is their risk of coagulation if you don't anticoagulate them. The next one is going to be a MELD score. It's going to be used oftentimes when we're talking about liver transplant or Wells and PERC is going to be when we're dealing with PEs. Do criteria is when we're dealing with endocarditis. Canadian head CT is when we're dealing with trauma. So this is oftentimes used when you have a patient who had some type of trauma, they fell, but you're not sure if you should get a CT or not. You plug all the information to the Canadian head CT and they'll tell you. NIH stroke, stroke score tells you kind of what their overall mortality, uh, morbidity and mortality um, with with a stroke and everything you just put into a score centaur is going to be used for strep 
Curb 65 is definitely very highly used in the um, ED because it determines whether or not you need to inpatient, uh, you need to admit a patient, or you can treat them as an outpatient for pneumonia. Uh, the auto ankle and knee rule is, is is good for imaging. Really, you use this all the time to image or not to image is, is the best question. And you can kind of look through some of these other calculators. I think these are going to be the ones that you should bookmark because these are ones that are going to uh, be highly used and are very useful. And it's going to be something that you can potentially impress other people. So this next resource is going to be a pretty good one. And uh, what it's used for is it's designed by the U.S. Preventive Task Force. Um, and they have a weird name, but it's the EPSS, Electronic Preventive Service Selector. This is great uh, for screening. One thing that I never knew when I was on outpatient medicine and in family medicine rotations was when they are a certain age, what should you do? And, you know, what type of screening do they need to be done? No one can remember those. So what they did is they kind of just broke it down for you. You enter in the age, you enter in the sex. And the reason why they have both is because certain individuals who are estrogen uh, therapy, uh, specifically males who are on um, estrogen therapy for females, they are at higher risk of certain disease than other people. So that's why they have both, even pregnancy and tobacco and sexual activity. And they'll talk about what type of screening you should get. A recommendation is B and C and so on and so forth. I think this is a great resource that you have to download for your family medicine. And then this one's going to be a good one also for either outpatient medicine, inpatient medicine, or also if you're on pediatrics. So this is the CDC vaccine schedules app and essentially i mean it's just a printed out version of uh, or sorry a digital version of all of their vaccine schedules but i think this is a good thing if you just want something to reference so that you don't have to carry around these papers all the time they have things for kids of different ages you see it's birth to 15 months 15 to 6 years so on and so forth and then they also have for adults because when you're an adult you also you still need vaccines uh, 19 to 21 and greater than 65 and so on and so forth. So hopefully some of these resources were helpful for you. Most of them are free. The only one that I've listed that is not free is going to be the UCSF Hospitalist Handbook that I mentioned uh, on the first slide. But everything else is free, um, and hopefully they have helped you in some way. Be sure to check out our website, medicalbasics.com, for more educational resources like our medical ID cards. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.